First, Service Manager uses the concept of change models to predefine the contents of specific types of request for change. The change model indicates the type of change the user wants to perform, which in turn dictates the workflow and risk. Second, the system provides objective change analysis data. Here, Adrian Baxter, the change manager, is reviewing some change requests. Let's see how Service Manager helps with objective risk assessment. Looking at the analysis of the change, he can see that the risk for this change has both a number and rating. He can also see in the change assessment section that the risk is meaningfully calculated. It takes into account the CIs, associated services, resources involved, and timing to show the risk in two main ways. First, the potential damage. This displays the potential damage that may result from the implementation of the requested change. Potential damage is calculated as a weighted value between 0 and 10, with a higher number indicating a higher degree of damage. Second, probability of failure. This displays a graphic representing the probability that the implementation of the change will fail to some degree. Additionally, Service Manager allows high-risk changes to affect the categorization. For example, a high-risk change cannot be pushed through as a standard or low-risk change. The impact assessment takes into account all of the relationships and dependencies on other CIs. Adrian is confident that all of this data is accurate and up-to-date because it comes from the CMDB and is validated through universal discovery. First of all, the potentially impacted CIs all have an impact severity rating shown by their icon. Here we can see the difference between those that are low and those that are critical and directly affect the change. Highlighting one of the CIs allows Adrian to see more details on the nature of the impact and the relationship. Adrian can also visualize the relationships and dependencies just as we saw for incident management. This gives Adrian a very thorough picture of how this change fits in the big picture and how to make sure it's successful. The collision section will show potential conflicts with any type of resource, from the technical implementers themselves to servers or other infrastructure. The Similar Changes tab displays a list of changes that are similar to the change request selected. This can be extremely helpful in understanding issues or success criteria with similar changes in the past. Here, Adrian can add or remove changes from the comparison list, as well as look at a statistical breakdown. The system-wide integrated change calendar makes it easy to see a forward schedule of change. Here we can see the full calendar view, where we can show the view by month, week, or day. Here we can also filter entries on the calendar. For example, we can add a filter to only show emergency changes. In addition to changes and change tasks, the calendar also displays time period records. Time periods can show when changes are more permissible, for example, as maintenance windows. This time period, for example, creates a maintenance window that occurs every Tuesday and Wednesday from 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. However, time periods can also be reflected as blackout periods. Here, this company freeze period goes from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Mountain Time every Friday, and we can see how this is reflected on the calendar. Service Manager also provides a simplified view of the calendar, embedded on certain records. For example, from the calendar section in a change or a change task record, the embedded calendar displays information about time periods and object records in a way that's more relevant to the current record. For example, from here, Adrian can see that the change he's working on is currently scheduled in a blackout window. He can now make the necessary adjustments. Service Manager's change management includes a release management category that provides the ability for several RFCs to be assessed, scheduled, approved, and deployed as a group. Here Adrian is working on a new release for the Service Manager upgrade that will be coming up in the next few months. He can coordinate the necessary building, testing, and implementation in several ways. First of all, he can see the changes related to this parent release in the Related Records section. On the Child Change Records, work can continue in parallel to the release. 
we can see on this change record specifically to set up the application server that it has its own workflow and requirements. However, work can also be coordinated either on any of the child changes or on the parent release using the task planner. For example, here we can create a group of tasks to address development, testing, and code promotion. When adding a task, we just need to give it a title, a task category, and tell it when to open in the parent workflow. We can also optionally give it a template, a condition, and an assignment rule, as well as indicate specific values for input and output. Linking the two tasks is simply a matter of dragging and dropping. These tasks will then automatically generate when specified in the task plan. After the change is implemented, Service Manager makes post-release review easy. Adrian can see the closure code and comments, which indicate how the implementation went, and the implementation plan compared to the actual execution to see if there's anything unexpected that occurred. Change managers can also conduct remediation before performing a post-implementation review. Adrian has a request for a password reset. Password resets are automated in Adrian's environment, so he adds the HP Operation Orchestration, or OO, password reset flow link to the change request. He decides to run the flow and only needs to input a few required fields to pass to OO, such as the user ID. OO has run the password reset flow and Adrian sees a message in Service Manager that it was run successfully. Let's take a look at what OO did. For this password reset, we see that it reset the password, confirmed an LDAP, and sent the user an email notification. Back in Service Manager, Adrian confirms that OO is writing back to the change request and inserting activity updates for our full audit trail. Everything for processing and completing this change was automated. Adrian creates a new change in Service Manager to add memory to a server. In this case, it is the host for the Exchange Business Service in Adrian's environment. Adrian adds information specific to the memory attribute of the host service asset. The change is to increase the memory from 16 gigabytes to 32 gigabytes. Adrian wants to view the details of the CI. He drills in and sees in the current managed state for the CI, the memory is 16 gigabytes. He can also see the actual state of this host CI. Here he is seeing an example of federation. This data is federated from the HP UCMDB. He confirms that the host has 16 gigabytes of memory. Additionally, Adrian can also view this data in the UCMDB browser. The change progresses along through the workflow, is approved, and any tasks to actually make the change to the memory have been completed. In the post-implementation review phase, Adrian validates the new memory value and can close the change. Finally, he looks at the detail of the CI again and sees that the managed state information has been replicated from the UCMDB and matches the actual state. This means that the proposed attribute changes tracked in Service Manager were validated by Discovery and reconciled in the CMDB.